Ohio State's running backs coach, Tony Alford. Folks. Oh, yeah, by the way, I should probably do this stuff, too. Follow me on Twix, John Diatomo. Hit the like button as you come in. Please do that. Hit that like button. Subscribe. And, of course, as always, share with a friend. So... There are a lot of things, and we could t we could tackle this in a lot of different ways, but we want to start by going through Tony Alford's background and why uh, this this is a big deal. So the first thing I want to point out is Sharon Moore's official statement on the matter. So Sharon Moore has said that Tony is an elite running backs coach who is an outstanding mentor, an example for young men in all aspects of football and life, I know that he will have a profound impact on our running back room and football program. Emphasis there. And football program. We're excited to have Tony and his wife Trina and their boys join the Michigan football family. Okay. So that was the official statement from Sharon Moore announcing the hire. Tony Alford, of course, also uh, decided to make a statement, and I'm not going to put it up because it's very long. Um, but he essentially said, uh, you know, over the last nine years, um, you know, he thanked a lot of people. He, he talked about high school. He talked about thanking Urban Meyer and Gene Smith and Ryan Day. Um, you know, and there was some heat uh, that he made that announcement. I think it was a very classy thing to do, but um, but not everybody agrees with that. So a little bit about Tony. He played at a at a school called Colorado State um, as a running back, and he actually had 1,035 yards in 1989. As a junior under Earl Bruce, you may remember Earl Bruce um, from if, if you followed Ohio State at all as a Ohio State coach. He did meet somebody named Urban Meyer in 1990 as Urban Meyer was an assistant at Colorado State. Then he goes and he coaches as an assistant. He has stints at Mount Union, Kent State, Iowa State, Washington, Iowa State again, Louisville. Uh, five years at Notre Dame as a running backs coach and even a wide receivers coach for a few years. Um, then when they decided to make some shifts, he went back to running backs. He's been at Ohio State for the last eight years as associate head coach and running backs coach. And uh, the last two of them, he's been running backs coordinator. Now, before we get to... Um, the five reasons why this hire is massive. I want to start by debunking something. I want to start by debunking this notion that we have from um, a member, I believe this is an Ohio State fan who commented this. You realize Ohio State fans are glad that he's gone. He's a mediocre recruiter and was never able to figure out a running back rotation. I am going to demonstrate how wrong this take is right now. Watch me. You ready? I hope Greg's watching. I'm going to demonstrate with facts just how wrong this take actually is. Um, so this is 247, and you're actually able to pull a list of of uh, all-time recruits from a, if somebody was a primary or a secondary recruiter of a particular player. So I'm going to show you now just the impact that Alfred had on recruiting. We start with, of course, a guy named Travion Henderson, a pretty good player, if, if I do say so myself. Um, you know, had some pretty amazing seasons in uh, 2021 and 2023. He was injured in 2022, as we know. Jalen Gill, primary recruiter. Tyreek Smith, primary recruiter. J.K. Dobbins, oh, remember him? He was pretty good. Primary recruiter, four-star, 0.97. Greg Bryant, primary recruiter. Demario McCall, primary recruiter. Elise Mack, secondary recruiter. Tight end, not even a running back. 
Lewis Nix, defensive tackle, not a running back, primary recruiter. Evan Pryor, primary recruiter. Brian Sneed, TJ Jones, Dexter Williams, Bolston, James Peoples, Ben Chrisman, Jacob Colwin. These are not, a lot of these aren't even running backs. Lathan Ransom, a safety, secondary recruiter. Folks, the list continues. Okay? This is Master Teague. Remember him? Got Master Teague on here. We've got tight ends. Dallin Hayden running back. Ryan Jacoby offensive tackle. Malik Burrow. Oh, by the way, he was secondary recruiter for Tommy Two Thumbs Eichenberg. And it just continues from there. I could go on and on and on and on and on to demonstrate that that statement is wrong. Demonstrably and clearly wrong. He is an incredible recruiter. And I have said many times, I don't really fault. Uh, I actually believe that uh, that Heartline does a tremendous job as wide receivers coach and a tremendous job recruiting. I've said that the position coaches have done a great job with recruiting and a great job coaching. My issue is with the, the management of the program from Ryan Day himself. The scheme that he's put in in the Big Ten, which is a physical conference, but a finesse method. And yet, he's still, in the Big Ten, only lost three games. If you want to count Oregon 2021 now that they're in the Big Ten, I guess you can, but three games. So imagine if he was in the Big 12. Probably would have won them, won them all, right? So the finesse doesn't necessarily work against the very best of the Big Ten, um, in this case, Michigan. It did work against almost everybody else, to be fair. However, I hope I've demonstrated that that take is completely false, um, at least from the recruiting perspective. So what I'm going to go over is, uh, oh, this one here. So it doesn't make sense the contract Ohio offered him. So Ohio State apparently offered him one year. Um, Michigan has offered him three years, reportedly, $2.5 million deal. Um, so that's, that's pretty solid. Uh, I think that the issue was that instead of a one-year deal, he wanted that respect of a three-year deal. Um, given what he contributes, not just to the running back room, but clearly, as Sharon Moore alluded to in his statement, the entire football program. Go back to Sharon Moore's statement and tell me that that statement about the football program doesn't do a lot of lifting, because it does. So I'm going to go through the five reasons why this is a really great move. And then I'm going to bring on Keith and any other callers that want to call in. Um, here is the link. Where I'm going to take calls one at a time, one at a time today. No panels or anything like that. Take them one at a time. Get Everybody can give their thoughts. And by the way, if you're not a Michigan fan, you're also welcome to call in. Okay? You're also welcome to call in. We take everybody here. We're not afraid to have a debate with a Buckeye. Okay. Reasons why this is a massive, massive higher for Michigan. Let's begin with this. I just showed you the 247 list that that kept going and going and going with the players that he's recruited. How about the fact that he's recruited nine top 200 running backs to Mike Hart's one? Now granted, I am not saying Mike Hart's a bad coach. Mike Hart is a fantastic running backs coach. As a recruiter, he left something to be desired at times. Okay? We said with TJ that he was a fantastic coach, and I'm not going to walk that back. But the numbers don't lie. Reason number two is that Alfred has the goods. He knows Ohio State's recruiting. You saw the recruiting that he does. He knows what they do for NIL. He knows their schemes. He knows inside information maybe even related to how this whole Michigan signal thing came about. I'm not going to go there, but you can see it on Twitter. A lot of people are, uh, you know, in the, in the Michigan circles talking about that he may know some things about how they got their hands on some of this information, um, you know, in, in nefarious potentially ways, allegedly. 
But the point is, I think this is pretty devastating when it comes to knowing what Ryan Day does. And so that's it's similar to Madison. I thought uh, Madison, when he left Michigan for Ohio State, I thought that was pretty devastating because he knows all of Don Brown's signals and Don Brown was too stubborn to change anything. So that's why Ohio State completely crushed Michigan in 2019. I believe that this move, Sharon Moore is saying, I'm here to win. I'm here to win another title. I'm here to get to another playoff. It's, it's a mission impossible move. Okay, it is. Number three, it's legal. Yes, folks. No concern about NCAA sanctions with this one. Ohio State took Madison from Michigan, and Nick Saban just did it with one of our coaches, George Hilo, uh, literally for one game to understand why, why Michigan is the way that they are. He hires George Hilo as an assistant. So it's legal. Reason number four, it adds more to the Texas and Florida pipeline. Again, if you look at the 247 all-time recruits, you're going to notice a pattern. Yes, there are Ohio people, but you'll see quite a few from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, you know, different cities in Florida. Uh, LaGrange, Texas, J.K. Dobbins. Again, J.K. Dobbins did a thing or two. And by the way, he's still in the NFL. And we, of course, have uh, uh, our resident... Uh, as uh, as the great as the great Devin Gardner called him Stephen Cherry Blossom, uh, J.K. Dobbins. He he's I think he's doing a few things. I I, I don't know. Uh, anyone anyone? Oh, by the way, Ezekiel Elliott. Did he do some things? You think Travion Henderson won't do some things when he goes to the NFL? So the great Devin Gardner has already addressed this and these things enough, so I'm not going to continue there. Um, but you can check out that show um, that just happened, and it was, it was quite interesting. Okay. Again, Texas and Florida pipeline. This is huge. This is where a lot of the talent is, right? And so when you look at, again, the J.K. Dobbins of the world, um, you know, and some of these Florida recruits, uh, this really expands more into the South, and we have already been doing that to an extent. Um, but you know, this is going to continue to improve recruiting in those areas, which I think is absolutely huge for uh, for the program. And finally, and finally, this this move shows how far the Michigan program has come and what Sharon Moore is prepared to do to win. By hiring a, a coach, a key coach, away from Ohio State, the associate head coach, the running game coordinator, and the running backs coach, all three, just saying, Sharon Moore has said, we're not just going to be satisfied with winning the title and then going back to 8-4 and four or 9-3. and three. No, 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 no. We're going to do whatever it takes to continue winning. So what that means is continue the Michigan DNA, physicality, continue the Michigan DNA of, you know, mostly paying recruits after they've done things on the field. But now you're starting to see the openness to an expanded look at NIL, right? An expanded look at NIL. Because Tony Alford, I can almost guarantee you, was uh, you know part of the discussions of how much money am I getting, what kind of car am I getting, and he knows how to navigate those conversations in ways that some of our coaches don't yet. So this is huge. Nick Saban talked about it. These are the conversations happening now in living rooms. How much am I making? And what is in it for me? 
as long as we keep the main identity of the program, the team, the team, the team, now you have a coach that knows how to navigate those conversations. And I think that that is absolutely huge. Sharon Moore made a absolutely, he hit a home run with this hire. We thought yesterday he, they might hire the Notre Dame running backs coach. They might hire uh, the Marshall coach. No, 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 no. The Ohio State University associate head coach and running backs coach is now officially at the University of Michigan. For those of you just joining us, uh, we are all about Tony Alford uh, and Michigan stealing Tony Alford from Ohio State today uh, with a three-year deal, approximately $2.5 million. That's what we're talking about today. We have our first caller on the line. We've got Keith joining us. Keith, uh, thanks for stopping by again here. <laughs> All right, John. Great to talk to you. You know, what's funny about this is I was on the way back from a meeting today, and I was in my car, and I got yeah. a notification from, uh, from uh, Ohio State feed. And I was, I was listening to it live. As they were saying, first it was reported that Alford was going, and he and they and they came to the very quick conclusion he's done at Ohio State. <laughs> he's done. You can't even start. You can't even get your name mentioned with Michigan and stay at Ohio State. And later in the feed, about twenty minutes later, they came up with Pete Thamel is reporting Alford signed with Michigan. Um, do you know what's also um, peculiar about his contract? What's it's that? Mike, it's Mike Hart's. Mm. That's just about what Mike Hart was making. I think Mark, Mike Hart was making 770-something thousand. You multiply that by three, 2.5. Yeah. So Tony Alford saw what he was making and saw what Hart was making. Says, I like his job better. Mm hmm. Yeah. OK, Um. this might build on one of your five reasons and maybe it's number six. But remember when Sherman Moore came in and he said, I am going to total restructure and um, overhaul the recruiting process. Mm -hmm. And I bet you he said to everybody in the program, I want to be able to recruit like Ohio State. Right. How about, I mean, yeah, I think that was definitely in there with uh, the discussions about navigating the NIL conversations with recruits. He knows how to do that. He's been doing it for years at Ohio State and having to battle against Miami, against Alabama, against the SEC schools that are throwing money at players. He knows how to navigate those conversations. And I, I hate to tell you, Michigan is going to have to navigate those conversations. The days of of that not happening are over. With the recent NC with the recent ruling against the NCAA in Tennessee, those days are over and you have to navigate those conversations. So I think that's absolutely your spot on Keith. Um that was for sure part of it. He knows how to he knows how to do that and he's done it at Ohio State. A uh, great strategic mind. Yes. Um and in order to support that model that you're talking about, they hired the new general manager. Mm -hmm. And one problem Michigan has always had is the administration didn't want the athletic department talking to their donors and taking money from the art school and the med school and the psychology school to, to fund the football program. And I think her, um, I think Sharon Moore has got a, has got the con administration convinced. We need to do our own appendant thing. We'll look for for new people and try not to hurt you too bad. But we're we've got to do this to stay competitive. So there is definitely an undercurrent from what <laughs> I've been hearing and listening about um, you know not really feeling respected, and I'm wondering if uh, bringing in Chip Kelly instead of maybe considering uh, Coach Alford as offensive coordinator, 
um, if that maybe played into the decision to leave, if there were maybe some clashes, because when a new leader takes over, a lot of times the people under him uh, get pushed out for his people, as we know happens in, in corporate life, and it happens in football too. So over time, Chip Kelly's people, you're probably going to start to see take over offensive positions if he's going to be OC for a long time. Um, so may, what, do you think that that might have played a role? Maybe there were some disagreements there? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And I want to tell you a little secret just between us boys. Mm. Brian Hartline. Yeah. He, he was talked about being promoted to the offensive coordinator. Right. He actually was for a little while in acting. But and was he? What was his role last year? Did they ever make him the offensive coordinator last yes. year? His yeah. title was offensive coordinator, um, but he did not call the plays. But he did not call the plays. So what do they do? They hire Bill O'Brien, who says, "Screw you." I was just yep. kidding. And then they hire Chip Kelly. So I think there's somebody else who might be very low, feel very disrespected. Yeah, I mean, and that's and look, uh, you know, to be to be completely fair, that may have played a role in the Mike Hart departure too. Uh, that uh, Sharon Moore selected Kirk Campbell to be the offensive coordinator. I mean, these are the things that just happen when you get passed over for for a role. You're going to look elsewhere to see, you know, test the market and see what's out there. And so, yeah, I think that that's that's definitely part of it. If he felt, but but what's really notable is this this rarely happens. It did happen in the other direction with uh, uh, Greg Madison a few years ago, but it doesn't normally happen where a school it, with this intense of a rivalry goes to the, the rival. Um, so I think it's notable that there were enough problems in his compensation, in his role, feeling disrespect. There had to be things, or he wouldn't have made this move. Didn't didn't Mike Hart uh, take the leave of absence the day after the win? It was, if not the day after, it was really soon after, yeah. So that was even before the uh, Campbell decision. I think Mike Hart might have been uh, perturbed and disrespected by Sharon Moore getting the head coaching job and not him. Because he left very quickly. Yep. Yeah, and he he was in the mix even back, uh, uh, you know, last time there was speculation about uh, Harbaugh maybe departing, and and you know he thought he had things wrapped up with the Vikings, I believe it was, and Mike Hart was in the mix for head coach, and um, and so it just kind of seemed like over the last three years, uh, the winds kind of changed, and Sharon Moore started emerging as uh, as the head coach in waiting. So I think that might have, you know, again, these things just happen. They happen in business. They happen in football. They happen across the board. Yes. Like I said the other night, I think that was a, that was a big loss for us. But boy, Sharon Moore really covered that. Remember Sharon Moore told us he's got somebody in mind and wait. You'll be shocked, but he's got somebody in line and he kept that secret really well. Oh, he did. And and Keith, uh, last thing, and then I'm, I'm going to let you go because we have another caller. But um, but do you do you think that this was really Sharon Moore saying, like, I'm not just here to slide back to eight and four and nine and three. I'm here to contend for titles year after year now. Like that one title that we got. Yeah, we're celebrating it. We're happy. We got a national championship. But Michigan's not satisfied. Um, yep. And I would say that plan to compete for more titles starts this year. I, I, I believe we, we have a fighting chance to have close to a good a year, if not as good as a year as we did last year. Oh, I want to leave with this question. Okay. Does... Ohio State was bragging, bragging, bragging about how they won the offseason. Yeah, yeah. Does this equal it? Does this 
just give us Ooh. a little talking point or does this swing it in our favor? I'll I I'll hang it. up and let you decide. I I I appreciate that, man. Keith, Keith, uh, go blue and thanks for uh thanks for thanks for being on. All right. All right, bye. Just a reminder to everybody here that uh we do have the phones open and we're gonna take the next call in a second here. But please, if you would like to call in, you don't have to put your camera on, you can just do audio. Uh, but we would love to hear your take on the home run hire of Tony Alford hiring away from Ohio State, Sharon Moore staking his claim. Um, next up, we have Moose joining us. Moose in the house. Go Blue, Moose. That's great to be a Michigan Wolverine, ain't it, John? It is great to be a Michigan Wolverine today. Oh, man, what a hire. I got I to gotta tell you, though, uh, since October, we've been hearing all we've been hearing from Ohio State fans is how the hammer is going to come down. Well, the hammer did come down, but it wasn't the hammer that they were expecting, was it? The hammer came down all right, um, and uh, I think it's comical when and and I I highlighted one comment on screen where one of the Ohio State people had said, you know, he wasn't a good recruiter. And then, you know, then you saw the bazillions yeah. of, of recruits that that uh, Alfred either, either was the primary recruiter for or the secondary recruiter. And you saw names like, I don't know, J.K. Dobbins and Travion Henderson. Yeah. You know, they they might. Oh, and then Eichenberg as a secondary recruiter. Um, yeah, he didn't recruit at all. Like, you know, that's it's it, it boggles my mind when people say that. Well, John, you know, that that's the, that's their their way of coping you know oh he he was mad when they lose somebody that good my thing is if you've been coaching at ohio state for nine years you're not mid you're doing something right that's all i'm saying and you just show that list this is in my opinion this is a great hire for michigan this guy can recruit with the best of them i mean you show the list of everybody that he's recruited all those big time names i mean yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll pull there. it up again because we've we've uh, got we've like doubled our viewership the last uh, the last couple minutes. So we'll, we'll, we're going to look at the list again for a second here. OK, let's. Yeah. Yeah. He hasn't recruited anybody. Uh, how about Travion Henderson? Hey. He's pretty good. Yeah, and, just a little bit. You know, uh, y you got uh, a, a guy named J.K. Dobbins. He, he was all right. He You know, he did a couple things and, uh, you, you know, uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, Want to you know helped uh, helped you know in the playoffs and helped obviously now in the NFL um, doing tremendous things um, you and, know in the NFL and as, you're scroll and as you're scrolling down John what I like about this is do you, do you see all running backs on this list no you don't he's got he's got linebackers in there he's got defensive tackles he's got safeties mm -hmm. that tells you this guy can recruit he he he, he definitely can recruit so. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited he's an Ann Arbor. Yeah. How about an interior offensive lineman? Uh how about a D tackle? How about Lathan Ransom? He was pretty good. Uh safety. Um right. yeah. So so you 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 saw Sharon Moore's statement, I think, when he, he, he made a statement that I think was very telling because he said, um, I know that. Tony will have a profound impact on our running back room end and football program, football program, because he's not just coming to recruit running backs. He is coming to coach the running backs room, but he's coming to help recruit everybody. Well, I'm thinking John safeties. I'm th yeah. I'm thinking John, if Alfred left, Ohio State to join Michigan. You think something's going on over there? There's got there's got to be something going on over there. Why would, you know, he, why would he do that? It's tough to speculate, but you you think that bringing in first bill, you know, as as Keith, our, our last caller just mentioned. Oh, here's Tommy Two Thumbs Eichenberg. Uh, you know, secondary recruiter for him. He did a couple things, if I recall correctly. Um, well, yeah, no. I mean, think about it. If you've been in a role for, 
you know, seven, eight years and they hire someone over you, AKA, well, technically Heartline last year, even though he didn't call plays, he was OC. And then this year, Bill O'Brien, and then Bill O'Brien went off and then Chip Kelly comes in. I wonder if, if there was a little bit of resentment because of that. I wonder if, you know, maybe three year deal, two and a half million dollars, mm -hmm. you know, there, there was a little more respect there given by Sharon Moore at Michigan. Yeah. I, I think it maybe chip has something to do with it. Maybe he got, he got more money than maybe he should have. And maybe that, maybe that pissed, uh, off or off. I don't know. He's like, well, maybe I'll, I'll just go somewhere where they appreciate me and make more money. It could, I don't know, it could be anything. I don't know. Oh, 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 but Mayan still. Williams. Yeah, he did a couple things. Yeah. Um, and he, he's a three-star. We know three-stars sometimes are diamonds in the rough. So now he's demonstrated he can find diamonds in the rough, too. Because Mayan Williams was a three-star, and he's he did some things, obviously, at, at Ohio State and put up some yardage, yeah. especially when Travion Henderson was injured. There's no doubt he he he's he's got a good eye for recruiting just from all the people that he showed on the list. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's huge. I think it's huge for a lot of reasons. Um, I don't know if you saw the five reasons why I think this is not a monumental hire, but um, you know, it really does. Uh, you know, since we did just double our viewership, and thank you, and please hit the like button. I'm gonna go through them again here for everybody just joining us. Number one, huge upgrade as a recruiter. Great respect for Mike Hart as a coach, but as a recruiter, Alfred had nine top 200 running backs to Mike Hart's one. Alfred knows Ohio State's recruiting. He knows what they do for NIL. He knows how to navigate the conversations with recruits in today's college football landscape because he had to face Miami firing the money cannons. He's had to face Texas A&M firing the money cannons. He's had to face yeah. Alabama and Georgia firing the money cannons. So he knows how to navigate those conversations and keep players at Ohio State, and now he's going to lend those talents to Michigan, right? And John, and John um, you know, all we heard from Ohio State when uh, Jim Harbaugh left and took all his staff with him was how we were going to be cooked. But look at look at uh, look at Sharon Moore's list of all the coaches he just hired. It's it's incredible, man. I can't, I mean, it's if you would have told me that we have Alfred, uh, Scrubs, John May, all those guys on our list, I would I I wouldn't I wouldn't have believed you. It's, I mean, it's just been incredible what he's able been able to accomplish. Oh, he can't recruit Florida, huh? Okay, let's go back up the list again. Michael Deeb, Fort yeah. Lauderdale, Florida. Yeah. And John May has ties with John May has ties in Florida. So I mean we're gonna be yeah. fine. Low Wood. You've got uh Justin Ferguson, you've got Marcus Crowley, you've got Stokes, you've got Hawk oh, uh Florida, 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 Ohio, Eichenberg, IMG Academy, huge academy in Florida. Um, what what's that again about not being able to recruit Florida? See, hey, all you have to Moore. do is if you do five seconds of research, you can find this list and look for yourself at what he was able to do in Florida and Texas. Right. Um, and, and I think he's going to help us expand the Florida and Texas pipeline quite a bit. He ain't playing, dude. Hey, Sharon Moore ain't playing around. I fully have 100% faith in this dude. No, this was huge. And you know, it, it, it's, I believe, and I said this on some of the other podcasts in chat, but I believe that this is the perfect mix now. His coaching staff has the perfect mix of experience, younger coaches who can navigate kind of more the TikTok generation, can navigate NIL, experience yeah. younger coaches, and now Intel. He now has Intel that he did not have before. And by the way, it's legal. OG. He has legally acquired Intel from a coach that knows a lot of what Ohio State does schematically and with recruiting. And you got and you got Wink Martindale, the OG, the old guy mm -hmm. of the bunch. 
and he's a he's a he's kind of he's kind of veteran guy you need from these younger guys, you know, to so mix as well with everybody else. Yeah, it's it, yeah. Wink Martindale, and he even said today he was the OG of uh, of the the defensive uh, philosophy uh, that that they, that Michigan runs. You know, and he's right. He's the OG when it comes to being this the the teacher of Mike McDonald and the teacher of of Jesse Minner, and now the guy who taught them. It's like it's like we just got Mister Miyagi. Okay, we had Daniel Larusso. Oh. I know you like Karate Kid. We had Daniel LaRusso. We had uh, who else? Uh, Julie Pierce. We had, you know, we, we had we had his like acolytes, and now we've got Mr. Miyagi himself, right? The guy, yeah, the guy who taught uh, McDonald and uh, Mentor, man. I mean, you can't beat that. How, how can you top that? Um, hummus. You are promoting him as a tool to subvert Ohio State through insider knowledge. Hummus, this is a legal way that that Ohio State poach coaches from Michigan, like Greg Madison. Alabama did it with Nick Saban, with um, with uh, George Hilo, who he uh, was oh, the linebackers coach. So Saban did it for one game, one game. So yeah, I think it's a well, great legal think way to do that. that. Think about that. He hired a, a former Michigan coach just for one game to get inside information on one game, and then they, they, let, they let him go. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So we've got that. We've got the Texas and Florida pipeline, which we've talked about, and then bottom line, folks. This move shows how far the Michigan program has come and what Sharon Moore is prepared to do to win. A lot of people thought with Jim Harbaugh going that the program was going to take this significant decline. You know, a lot of the media and people who weren't, you know, following yep. Michigan every day, like we do, they thought, oh yeah, it's going to be eight and four, seven and five. You know, they're going to take this huge dip. Um, well, clearly with the moves that Sharon Moore is making, He's not planning on taking a dip anytime soon. He's planning to go to the playoff again. Yeah, you, well, Michigan was going to fall off a cliff, John. That's what everyone was saying, you know, after after just winning a national championship. You know, that was that was funny as oh. Yeah, it's it's interesting. So yeah, I mean, it's a great coaching staff. It's uh, it's. It, you know, it's, uh, you know, again, like I said, experience mixed with newer coaches mixed with intelligence. And um, and now we're going to get this take. Alfred wasn't a great coach. What? Come on, man. He's if a he good wasn't coach. A great... Very replaceable. He... Very replaceable. Moves. OK, if he wasn't a great if he wasn't a great coach. Why, how do you end up staying at Ohio State for nine years? Do they, do they keep just mid coaches there? No, they don't. Yeah. And and five years at Notre Dame. And, you know, because that's nothing, right? Notre Dame. Come on, Ohio State fans. You're better than that, man. Oh, and, oh, and by the way, um, he, he played at Colorado State as a running back. And, and his, in 1989, he was coached by a guy named Earl Bruce. So that you know, that's uh, uh, ringing any bells, Ohio State fans. Oh, and right. also he met a guy named Urban Meyer his last year at Colorado State, and that's what that's led to the connection of him coming to Ohio State. All right. Hey, John, I wonder how David Greenshield is taking all this. I know, I know, our largest fan base is going to be upset about this. You know, we don't want to upset everyone. Well, uh, well, David Greenshield. And Ohio State fans are welcome to call the show. If you have your take that you want to give us on what you think about this news, this isn't the 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 invite isn't just for Michigan fans. If if a Buckeye wants to call in and face the Lions Den or the Wolverines Den, you are welcome to call the show.
and give your reasoning why this isn't a slam dunk hire. And I and we're going to we're going to with facts explain why that's not the case. 